Lewis. Nice feed. Penetration and rejected by Howard. The other day, nice pass back to Howard, who throws it down. D12. Alley U. Howard at the buzzer. Dwight Howard climbs through the roof. Superman. Superman is in the building. <laughs> yes, he is. Clark Kent is winning the phone booth and he comes out and Superman has came to the building. The NBA's last true preps to pro superstar, he was one of the most impactful defensive players the league has ever seen. From Atlanta to Taiwan, this is the story behind Dwight Howard. Dwight David Howard II was born December 8, 1985 in Atlanta to Dwight Sr., a Georgia State Trooper, and Cheryl Howard, a quote, miracle baby who came along after the couple had suffered seven miscarriages. And the miracle baby had him some serious athletic pedigree. Cheryl played on the first women's basketball team at Georgia HBCU Morris Brown College, while Dwight Sr. served as the athletic director at Southwest Atlanta Christian Academy. Once Dwight Jr. got to Southwest Atlanta Christian, a star was born. Howard's combination of size and athleticism at the power forward position was too much for fellow teenagers to handle. By the time he was a senior in 2003-04, he was widely viewed as the best high school baller in the country, averaging roughly 25 points, 18 rebounds, 8 blocks, and 3 assists to lead the Warriors to a state championship. Howard swept all the major National Player of the Year awards, making him the consensus number one recruit in the 2004 class. During the NBA's preps to pros era, however, the 18-year-old Howard was also draft eligible. And just like college programs salivated at the possibility of landing him, Howard was regarded as a top two NBA prospect heading into the 04 draft, along with fellow big man Emeka Okafor. Deciding between being the potential number one pick and immediately signing a guaranteed multi-million dollar contract versus heading to college wasn't much of a choice. Howard declared for the 04 draft, in which the Orlando Magic owned the number one selection, and the rest is history. In the 2004 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Dwight Howard from Southwest Christian Okafor was seen as the more NBA-ready big man, so the Magic, and everyone else who understood the heights of Howard's upside, weren't discouraged when Howard finished behind Okafor and Ben Gordon in Rookie of the Year voting. After all, the teenaged Howard still averaged a double-double with nearly two blocks per game as a rookie, helping Orlando improve from 21-61 afterthought to 36-win up-and-comer, despite the 2004 departure of Tracy McGrady. Howard's freakish athletic gifts and bright future in Orlando evoked memories of a young Shaquille O'Neal, and that comparison was further fueled when the Magic rehired Brian Hill to coach Howard's Magic in 2005. It was Hill, after all, that had guided legendary Magic teams led by Shaq and Penny Hardaway back in the mid-90s. Hill shifted Howard to more of a traditional center role than that of a power forward, though the big man's numbers only modestly increased as a sophomore and Orlando once again ended up stuck on 36 wins, the wheels were in motion for a turnaround. Trying to go up and under, had it blocked, Al had it blocked, loose ball picked off by Stevenson. Howard again! <laughs> Spectacular. Howard averaged roughly 18 points, 12 rebounds, and 2 blocks on 60% shooting during the 2006-2007 campaign, as the Magic cracked the 40-win mark and made the playoffs for the first time in four years. For his effort, the converted center earned his first All-Star and All-NBA selections. The Magic were swept by the powerhouse Pistons in the first round of the playoffs, but were well on their way to relevance with Howard leading the charge. During that 06-07 season, Howard logged nearly 700 more minutes than any of his teammates, 
while suiting up for all 82 games for the third consecutive year to start his career. His workload as a youngster was immense, but his broad and still growing shoulders were built to handle the burden and his impact on both the Magic and the NBA at large would continue to grow. With Stan Van Gundy replacing Hill on the sidelines, and Rashard Lewis adding some scoring punch to a team that already boasted Howard, Hito Turkoglu, and Jameer Nelson, the Magic broke through in Howard's fourth season. Orlando notched 52 wins and won a playoff series for the first time in 12 years, with Howard absolutely feasting on Chris Bosh's Toronto Raptors. Look his life. A real nice pass. Howard recorded three separate 20-point, 20 20-rebound performances in the first series victory of his career, averaging roughly 23 points, 18 rebounds, and four blocks to eliminate Toronto in five games. The Magic once again fell short against the veteran Pistons, this time in the second round, but Howard's year was an overwhelming success. He made his second of eight straight All-Star appearances, earned his first of five straight All-NBA First Team selections, and his first of five consecutive All-Defensive Team honors. During the 2008 All-Star festivities, he famously donned a Superman cape while winning the dunk contest, and months later, featured on the American Redeem team that won Olympic gold in Beijing. At 23 years old, Howard had already established himself as the best center on the planet, was one of the NBA's most marketable and likable young stars, and was the face of one of the league's up-and-coming teams. Not everyone seemed to be rooting for him, however, as it was after Howard's Superman performance in the 08 dunk contest that Shaq began to feud with the younger big man. O'Neal, who had the superhero's logo tattooed on his left bicep, was blunt. Superman is still mine, O'Neal said of the nickname in 2008. He has to do something first to be called Superman. Anyone can win a slam dunk contest. Hello, my name is Shaquille O'Neal. Don't make me put this cape on for- Let me have you sit down. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Billy Jean, it's the my lover. Woo! Howard didn't need O'Neal's approval. He had the love of the people, as evidenced by his record-setting 3.1 million All-Star votes in 2009, a record that stood for 10 years. Still, the lovable, hulking center nearly satisfied O'Neal's standards that season anyway. Howard won his second of five rebounding titles in 2008-09, led the league in blocks for the first of two consecutive seasons, and became the youngest Defensive Player of the Year award winner in NBA history. His 20.6 points per game was also tops on a 59-win Magic Squad that advanced all the way to the NBA Finals. The basketball world at large had been preparing for a Kobe vs. LeBron Finals matchup between Bryant's Lakers and James's Cavaliers, both top seeds in their respective conferences. But Howard had other ideas. He averaged 17 rebounds in a seven-game second-round victory over the defending champion Celtics, then averaged nearly 26 points on 65% shooting in a six-game upset of LeBron's Cavs in the East Final, which ended with a 40-point, 14-rebound performance from Howard in Game 6. Finals sweeping Detroit, sweeping Atlanta. But they just ran in with Dwight Howard with the spin move. The Magic came up short against the Lakers in the final, but Howard had done all he possibly could to drag Orlando within three wins of a championship. Howard also set an NBA Finals record with nine blocks in a Game 4 loss. With Howard at the center of everything, and shooting around him in Van Gundy's 4-out, 1-in system, Orlando's 2009 Finals loss was viewed as a stepping stone towards future glory. But, as it turned out, Orlando's best chance had already slipped through its fingers. Howard remained a superstar for years, a top three, if not top two player in the game at his absolute apex. But the Magic never again reached the heights they did in the spring of 2009. Between the 2009-10 season and 2011-12, Howard averaged nearly 21 points, 14 rebounds, 3 blocks, 2 assists, and a steal while racking up two more Defensive Player of the Year awards. But the Magic slowly faded from their 0-9 perch atop the East. Orlando lost to Boston in the Conference Finals in 2010, then lost to the Hawks and Pacers respectively in feeble first-round series in 2011 and 2012 with Howard missing the 2012 postseason after surgery to repair a herniated disc. 
Howard grew impatient and had actually requested a trade before that lockout shortened 2011-12 campaign tipped off. It's hard to fault him. Howard had given everything to the match, having suited up for 678 of a possible 702 games between the regular season and playoffs during his time in Orlando. The Magic, in turn, had rewarded him with a team that entered the 2011-12 campaign with Ryan Anderson serving as its second best player. Still, Howard could have gone about things differently, especially when it came to Van Gundy. The most awkward moment of Howard's Magic tenure and the lasting memory of his dramatic final season in Orlando came during media availability following an April 5th, 2012 practice. Van Gundy told reporters that Magic management had confirmed Howard wanted him fired. Meanwhile, Howard, who continued to deny reports that he had undermined his coach, aloofly interrupted the interview to put his arm around Van Gundy in an unconvincing and awfully timed attempt to downplay reports that his coach had already confirmed, unbeknownst to him, obviously. I was told it was true by people in our uh, management. So, you know, right from the top. So. Is Dave Ping here today? The guy who started this BS? He's, I don't see Ping here. Me but, neither. Uh, are you guys done with uh, me? Yeah. Yeah. That's all. You can talk to him now. All right. Stan just said they were good. Yeah. What was true? Stan just said that you wanted him fired. I said that? Yeah, that's what Stan said. According Who did I say that to? According to Mr. I don't know. I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm asking you. Since you guys got so many sources. Stan, your, your, your coach said he heard it from me. I didn't hear anything. I'm just you and I'm just telling you. Any public support Howard still enjoyed evaporated in that moment. The superstar whose youthful energy and sense of humor had endeared him to fans of all ages just a few years prior was now seen as a fraud. And there was more to it than just being labeled an immature coach killer. Howard was once the teenage phenom from a Christian academy who said his goal was to use basketball as a platform for God's glory and then ended up with five children by five women. The NBA star was hardly the first professional athlete to be judged for his life off the field of play, but very few of the pro athletes engaged in custody and child support battles had also once claimed they'd be the reason the NBA would one day include a cross in its logo. Months after Van Gundy's offseason firing, Howard got his wish with a trade to the star-studded Lakers. Most players gain marketing opportunities in Hollywood. Howard, though, lost major sponsorship deals around this point in his career. He also seemed to be losing himself. I'd hear people say, you should play more like Shaq, so I tried to bully guys. But that didn't work because I'm not as big as Shaq, the undersized center told Sports Illustrated in 2017. Then I'd hear people say, you smile too much, you should be more like Kobe. So I tried to put on a mean face and play mad, but I wound up getting all these stupid texts and flagrant fouls. Heading to LA was yet another step along the same career path that Shaq had forged from Orlando to Los Angeles a generation prior. But the now retired O'Neal stance on Howard hadn't softened over the years. Despite the fact Howard battled through the lasting effects of back surgery and a subsequent shoulder injury to average 17 points, 12 rebounds, and two blocks in 76 games as a Laker, Shaq and other Lakers lifers somehow saw a soft big man who was partly to blame for the fact a team featuring Bryant, Howard, Pau Gasol, and the injured Steve Nash had flopped. Dwight Howard, every time he stepped in my arena that I built, his dumb ass needed to look up. And not only that, when I say something, you should take the tidbits of what I'm saying. I'm giving you answers to the test. Stop being so damn sensitive. We don't want no sensitive big guys in L.A. After a nightmare season in L.A. that ended when Bryant tore his Achilles, Howard spurned the Lakers in free agency to join James Harden's Houston Rockets. When the Rockets and Lakers eventually clashed more than a year later, Bryant essentially confirmed reports that he and Howard never saw eye to eye with one stinging word. They missed about five of those tonight. The Lakers have not been able to get it. And Howard with the elbows and Kobe was defending and some words exchanged and this goes back to what was the story when the two were wearing the same uniform. The dig from Kobe notwithstanding, Howard continued to produce in Houston, averaging better than 18 points and 12 rebounds for a 54-win Rockets team in 2013-14 
then averaging 26 points and 13.7 rebounds in a first round series loss to Portland. Although knee issues forced him to miss half the 2014-15 campaign, Howard made it back to start every postseason contest for a Rockets team that advanced all the way to the West Finals. In fact, it was Howard, not Harden, on the court when Houston launched a furious and unlikely Game 6 comeback on the road to force a Game 7 against the Clippers in the 2015 West Semis. Still, while Howard recovered to play 71 games in 2015-16, it started to become clear he just wasn't the same force anymore. The then 30-year-old was still able to secure a $70 million contract with his hometown Hawks in 2016 free agency, and he still averaged a double-double for a couple more years, but his impact waned. The Hawks traded him to Charlotte after just one season, and the Hornets traded him to Washington a year later, where Howard played only nine games for the Wizards following another back surgery. That injury-riddled 2018-19 season also saw Howard endure an embarrassing and bizarre off-court scandal in which a transgender woman alleged in a lawsuit that Howard threatened her for not signing an NDA. Howard denied the claims and eventually countersued, but would later admit how much the ordeal impacted him. I was like, man, I'll never want to come outside again, but I'm like, why? H how long did, did that take for you? Like, were you just sitting at home alone? Hmm, a couple months. It likely didn't help that he went 11 months between games. When Howard finally got back on the court for the 2019-20 season, however, it was once again for the Lakers, this time led by LeBron and a generally more welcoming environment in LA though. Though he was a full-time bench player for the first time in his career, it was a fitting role for that stage of his basketball life, as Howard provided the Lakers with a defensive boost and rebounding presence off the bench. Perhaps invigorated by his first chance to contend in years, Howard even started seven playoff games between the Western Conference Finals and Finals, proving especially valuable in a West Final matchup against Denver's Nikola Jokic. His role diminished as the Finals played out, but Howard finally captured that elusive championship ring as a member of the 2020 Lakers. His feel-good season even included a return to the 2020 dunk contest with a Superman theme that paid tribute to Bryant, who had tragically died only weeks earlier. The 2020 championship did nothing to cement Howard's status in the eyes of his biggest critic, though. Like as a player, though. What's that? So a lot of players on their little Instagram bragging like they were the reason they got the championship. I ain't gonna say no names. There was a lot of that going on. I, I ain't gonna say no names. <laughs> I, you don't know. have to. Sit you your know. ass down. You didn't do nothing. Stop it. <laughs> but I already know well, who you're talking about. You know I, it too. I know you know who I'm talking about. Stop it. There Front were, runner. By the way, uh, bandwagon jumper. Stop <laughs> it. Oh. Stop it. Don't be talking to me like you know players. Sit your ass down. Stop. Nevertheless, that 2020 title likely eased the pain of being passed around by six teams in a seven year span between 2015 and 2022. Howard eventually headed to Taiwan when no NBA job presented itself ahead of the 2022-23 campaign. Howard being unable to find NBA work as of late 2022 isn't surprising given his limitations at this stage of his career, but the future Hall of Famer being left off the NBA's 75th anniversary team was a legitimate stunner. Howard's rickety post game was often criticized, and the fact that 93% of the big man's career field goals came within 10 feet of the rim might seem archaic to new age fans, but rattle off Howard's career resume and ask yourself how many bigs in history can top it. An NBA champion and Olympic gold medalist, he's one of five players in history to amass more than 19,000 points, 14,000 rebounds, and 2,000 blocks. He's an eight-time All-Star, eight-time All-NBA selection, five-time All-Defensive team member, three-time Defensive Player of the Year, and the first to ever win the award in three consecutive seasons. He finished top five in MVP voting on four occasions and averaged a double-double for 14 straight years to start his career. Though his back slowed him down at times, Howard's durability as a barely 6'10", 265-pound center was beyond admirable. He suited up for all 82 games five times in his first six seasons, cracked the 70 game mark 12 times in 18 years overall, and played at least 60 games in six of his final seven seasons. Among the nearly 900 players, 6'10 or taller, who've ever made it to the NBA, Howard ranks ninth in games played. Howard was the biggest snub on that 75th anniversary team, 
which may simply speak to how unpopular he had become by the twilight of his career, both on and off the court. I'm kind of the loner, Howard told Sports Illustrated in 2017, describing his lack of friends in the league. Perhaps he was being judged for failing to live up to the faith-based goals he set for himself as a wide-eyed teenager coming from a sheltered environment. Perhaps that impossibly uncomfortable moment with Van Gundy still lingers in memories all these years later. Perhaps being a target of Kobe Bryant's ire is a shadow too big to escape. But Howard is far from the first celebrity who fails to live up to the naive expectations set before their star turn. He certainly wasn't the first or last NBA star to get a coach fired or force his way out of town. And he was only one of many rivals whose names could be found on Kobe's basketball hit list. Why Howard, of all those who came before and after him, garnered so much vitriol in comparison remains a mystery. There may not be an NBA star whose standing in the court of public opinion is as out of sync with his standing in the game's history than Dwight Howard. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.